Hello everyone, welcome to my civil engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I post my new videos. So today we'll be discussing how to analyze the continuous beam using moment distribution method. So here in this question, they have been given that here it is a continuous beam which is given. So here we are supposed to analyze this continuous beam which is given as shown in the figure. So apart from this, they have also given a condition that the support B is sinking by 2.5 mm. You can just observe here, the support B is sinking by 2.5 mm. And also they have given the Young's modulus value, that is the value of E as 2 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. 2 into 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. And the value of I they have given as 3.5 into 10 power 7 mm power 4. That is moment of inertia value they have given as 3.5 into 10 power 4, 7 mm power 4. So here before analyzing what do you mean by the, uh, or what do you mean by sinking of the support and also analyzing that by using the moment distribution method we are supposed to we are supposed to check what you, uh, how to analyze by using the sinking of the support so here in this case there will be additional fixed end moments so in this case so there will be additional fixed end moments which are generated by the by the sinking of the supports so in usually which we uh, the problem which we were solving by by the previous lecture series with reference to that so if we just refer to that we were only solving the fixed end moments based on the loaded conditions so here apart from the loaded condition we are supposed to add the fixed end moments also due to the sinking of the supports so total fixed end moments here is due to the loading due to the loading plus that of sinking of the support so before analyzing what are the what will be the uh, uh, i mean uh, the value of the sinking of support we are supposed to analyze a concept so that is how much will be the support sinking value so if i just see here you can just observe here so this is a support if just if this is the support left side of the support if it is sinking so if i just take this as delta delta is the amount of deflection or sinking whatever it is so here uh, the left side is sinking so the left side is sinking so this will be clockwise moments so the value always will be equal to 6 EI delta divided by L square, both the sides, 6 EI delta divided by L square. So the L is this span length. So L is the span length. So L is the uh, distance of the member or the span of the member. So here, uh, here you can just observe that. The right side of the support, if the right side of the support is higher than that of the left side of the support, if right side of the support is higher than that of the left side of the support, or you can also, you can also tell in this way that if the left side of the support is sinking, so in that, in that direction, so in that direction, always the the value or the direction of the fixed end moments is clockwise. I repeat it. So whenever the right hand side support is higher than the top left hand side of the support or it can also be stated as the left hand side if at all if it is sinking the left hand side of the support if it is sinking with reference to the right hand side of the support then then the value of the uh, fixed end moment both the side is equal to 6 ci delta divided by l square based on the magnitude wise but when you come to the direction so it will be it will be clockwise so it will be clockwise so next thing so if at all if at all so if the right hand side is sinking 
So if the right hand support is sinking like this, so this is equal to delta, the magnitude always it will be equal to 6 EI delta divided by L square, 6 EI delta divided by L square, 6 EI delta divided by L square. So in this case, it is equal to anti-clockwise direction. So in this case, it is equal to anti-clockwise direction. So this is the span of the member. L is the span of the member. So here, whenever the right hand side of the support, so whenever the right hand side of the support is lower than the left hand side of the support, or it can also be stated as if the right hand side of the support is sinking with reference to that of the left hand side of the support, then in such case, in such case, the fixed end moment due to sinking of the support will be taken or will be considered as the anti-clockwise direction. But the magnitude wise, it is equal to 6 EI delta divided by L square, both the sides and right? both the conditions. So after getting the knowledge of the sinking of the support, we shall start with this numerical. So here we have been given the continuous beam here. So wherein uh, AB is the member which is having the uh, UDL of the magnitude equal to 40 kilonewton per meter. So 40 kilonewton per meter, which is having the span of three meters. So span distance is equal to three meters. So next is uh, the span BC, wherein the span BC is carrying the concentrated load or it is also called as center concentrated load. So which is having the equal distribution one and one meter. So next is uh, the uniformly distributed load, uh, which is carried by CD uh, member. So it is having the uniformly distributed load of 50 kilonewton per meter at the distance of three meters. So at the distance of three meters. Now we are supposed to analyze for the for the uh, overall continuous beam for that. The first step is to determine the fixed end moments. So determination of fixed end moments, determination of fixed end moments or it is also called as calculation of fixed end moments. So as I said that the fixed end moments whenever there is a sinking of the support so total fixed end moments will be the will be the summation of the fixed end moments due to the due to the loading and also and also due to the sinking of the supports on, and also due to the sinking of the supports so if i just consider the first span that is span ab so mfab mfab so it is equal to, it is equal to, uh, uh, it is the, uh, it is said that span or point B is or support B is sinking. So if the support B is sinking, so it is the condition wherein, if, if I just represent here, this is the way it is sinking. This is uh, toward, if I just take A, B as a span, as a span. So this is span which is sinking at the distance of delta that is equal to 2.5 mm. So 2.5 mm. So here the right side of the span, the right side of the span here is less than, uh, I mean lower than that of the left side. So this condition, so if this is the condition, so if this condition is satisfied, then the fixed end moments for the sinking of the support will be in the anti-clockwise direction with the magnitude equal to 6 EI delta divided by L square. So 6 EI delta divided by L square. So here uh, for the load, it is equal to W L square divided by 12 since it is the, since it is a uniformly distributed load. So uh, when I take up the fixed end moment due to sinking of the support, it is minus uh, 6 EI delta divided by L square. Why it is minus? Because the right hand side is uh, lower than that of the left hand side. Uh, that is the second condition is satisfied. So if this is the condition, the magnitude is equal to 6 EI delta divided by L square and the direction is equal to the um, anti-clockwise direction. Hence it is considered to be as 
negative. Hence, it is considered to be as negative. So if I just substitute here, so in place of W, it is 40. So 40 kilonewton per meter. And then L square, L square, it is equal to 3 square, 3 square divided by 12, divided by 12, minus, minus 6. E is equal to 2 into 10 power 5. So 2 into 10 power 5 into I value is uh, 3.5. So 3.5 into 3.5 into 10 power 7 mm power 4. So divided uh, into delta value again is 2.5 mm. Overall divided by uh, L square. Since all this uh, 2, uh, 2 into 10 power 5. 3 into 10 power 7 and then uh, 2.5. All these are in mm. So L should also be in mm. So therefore it is 3, three meters means 3000 mm. So whole square because it is L square. So if I just simplify this. So for this the value 40 into 3 square divided by 12. I will get the value as minus 30. And for the overall, if I just solve this, I'll get the value as uh, minus 11.67. So if I just add that, it will be equal to minus 41.67 kilonewton meter. So kilonewton meter. So this is how we are supposed to calculate the uh, MFAB. MFAB. So this is the value of MFAB. So next coming on to MFBA. So MFBA is equal to MFBA. MFBA is equal to, this is a positive value. So plus W L square divided by 12 minus, because this is a second condition, both the side it is um, uh, anti-clockwise, hence it is negative 6 EI delta divided by L square. So the same substitution as that of the above. So the value will be minus 30 plus 11.67. If you do, you will be getting the value as 18.33 uh, 18.33 kilonewton meter, the positive value 18.33 kilonewton meter. So this is MFBA. So fixed end moment at BA span. So next, MFBC. So if I just consider MFBC. So here you can just observe for the BC span. For the BC span, so it is subjected to center concentrated load. So when it is subjected to center concentrated load, the value is equal to minus WL by 8. So the value is equal to minus WL by 8. So minus WL by 8 is due to the load. So if I just take the uh, uh, FEM, sorry, fixed end moments due to the sinking of the support. So B is the sinking of the support. It will be of this fashion. You can just check that or you can just observe that. So B is the support which is towards the left side. So it is towards the left side. The B is the support towards the left side. So C is the support towards the right side. So you just forget here, forget about the CAB span. So only concentrate on BC. So B is towards the left side and C is towards the right side. So left side is lesser than or of lower distance or lower value than that of the right side. Or you can also state it as the right side of the support is at the higher level compared to that of the left side of the support. It will be following the first condition. So here for the first condition, the magnitude is equal to 6 ei delta divided by L square itself. But the direction in both the sides is clockwise. So therefore, it is equal to plus 6 ei delta divided by L square plus 6 EI delta divided by L square. So WL by 8. So W minus W here is uh, 100. So 100 into L here is equal to 2 meter. The total uh, is 2 meters divided by 8 minus, sorry, plus 
6e is equal to 2 into 10 power 5, i is equal to 3.5 into 10 power 7 into 2.5 divided by 2000 square. Divided by 2000 square since all are in mm. Since all are in mm, so 2 meters has to be converted into mm. So it is 2000 mm. So therefore, if I just substitute and simplify uh, the value, I'll be getting it as minus WL by 8 is minus 25 plus 6 EI delta divided by L square. I'll be getting it as 26.25. So 26.25 minus 25 plus 26.25. So I'll be getting the value as plus 1.25 kilonewton meter. So 1.25 kilonewton meter is a overall value of fixed end moment for MFBC. So for MFBC, the overall value of the fixed end moment is equal to uh, 1.25 with a positive value kilonewton meter. So the next is MFCB. MFCB. If I just consider MFCB, so it is the positive variation of the value. So MFCB, MFCB is equal to plus WL by 8, plus WL by 8, and then plus. 6 EI delta divided by L square. So it is the positive variation. The same substitution here. The positive variation and same substitution. So it will be equal to 25 plus 26.25. So 25 plus 26.25. So here 25 plus 26.25. 51.25. So 25 plus 26.25 kilonewton meter. So this is the value of MFCB. MFCB, you are supposed to get it as um, 51.25, the positive variation. So the next here is MFCB. So MFCD. So MFCD. So when you are starting, when you are stating for MFCD, so here CD, we are going to take it as say, uh, separate, uh, I mean, separate member since we are going to analyze for AB, BA, BC, CB, CD, uh, DC. So CD and DC, when you consider C and D, so you just, you can just observe that either, neither C nor D will be having the, uh, will, not, will not be having any effect for sinking of the support. So therefore, here, whereas in case of CD uh, span, so there is no consideration of fixed end moment. There is no consideration of fixed end moment for this span. So only uh, the fixed end moments is only due to 50 kilonewton meter itself. So therefore, for MFCD, so MFCD is equal to minus WL square divided by 12 itself. Why? Because when you consider the C, either C or D, there is no such uh, sinking of the support is existing. So therefore, it is not affected by the sinking of the support condition over here. So therefore, it is equal to only the uh, FEM due to the load itself. That is 50 kilonewton per meter. So it is minus 50 into L square is 3 square divided by 12. So it is equal to 50 into 3 square divided by 12. So it is equal to minus 37.5 kilonewton meter, kilonewton meter and MFDC is a positive variation WL square divided by 12. So if you just substitute as of the same above, so it is plus W L square by 12. So it is plus 37.5 kilonewton meter. So these are the fixed end moment values for the individual spans. So after uh, determination of the fixed end moments, so after this determination of the fixed end moment, so the next step is we are supposed to calculate the uh, distribution factors. So we are supposed to calculate the distribution factors so calculation of 
distribution factor calculation of calculation of distribution factor calculation of distribution factor so as in this case calculation of distribution factor so we are supposed to make the tabular column so in the tabular column so first column is uh, join second one is member third one is uh, third one is called as uh, relative stiffness relative stiffness and it is represented by k small k total relative total relative stiffness so total relative stiffness is sigma k sigma k and last one is distribution factor df now if, uh, if i just see to the uh, i mean the numerical so you can just observe that b and c are the two joints over here so b and c are the two joints so first joint i'm going to consider here is joint b so joint b the member i am supposed to take in such a way that it has to be initiated it has to be initiated from the jo selected joint only from the selected joint only so now i am selecting joint b here so member should be b a and b c so where b is the initiating joint so from b the top a so from b to the top c so it is b a and b c so now the next column here is relative stiffness so as in case of relative stiffness so relative stiffness is usually defined as it is the ratio of it is the ratio of the moment of inertia the ratio of moment of inertia to that of the span the ratio of moment of inertia to that of span is called as relative stiffness relative stiffness is defined as ratio of moment of inertia to that of the span length so here um, when, when i consider for the member ba so when i consider for the member ba so a b is the joint a is the farther end so b is the joint a is the farther end for b so whenever whenever when the farther end of the member uh, of the respective joint is fixed in nature is fixed in nature then the relative stiffness value is taken to be as i by l itself so i repeat it so whenever when the farther end of the member of the respective joint is consider is having the fixed support then the relative stiffness value is considered to be as i by l itself so i here is i itself because they have not represented the individual values of i if they have not represented in the question it can be straight away taken as i itself so l here is 3 meters so i by l so l is 3 so i by 3 so it is equal to 0.33 times of i in the decimal form so next when i just consider bc when i just consider for the span bc so c b is the joint so b is the joint c is the farther end b is the joint c is the farther end for the joint b which is the continuous support so this is the continuous support so whenever it is having the continuous support again the value of k is equal to i by l itself so in this case it is i remains i as it is and l is equal to span of bc that is equal to 2 meters so if i just consider it in the decimal form it is equal to 0.5 i 0.5 times of i so the next one is total relative stiffness so total relative stiffness is uh, nothing but it is the summation of it is the summation of the uh, relative stiffness of the members of the respective joint i repeat it total relative stiffness is nothing but it is the 
summation of the relative stiffness of the members of the respective joint only so whenever when we consider the total relative stiffness so for joint b it is the summation of the relative stiffness of ba and bc so for ba i have got it as 0.33 i and bc i have got it as 0.5 i so if i just sum it up it will i am getting around 0.33 plus 0.5 it is 0.833 times of i so 0.833 times of i so here the next step is uh, distribution factor determination of the di distribution factor so distribution factor it is defined as the ratio of the ratio of the relative stiffness ratio of relative stiffness to the top total relative stiffness the ratio of relative stiffness to the top the total relative stiffness so here of the of the respective member of its respective joint so i repeated ratio of relative stiffness of the particular member of its respective joint to the top total relative stiffness of the respective joint so here the relative stiffness of ba i have got it as 0.33 i total relative stiffness as 0.833 i so 0.33 i divided by 0.833 i if i just do that i'll be getting the distribution factor for um, um i mean uh, span ba so that is equal to 0.4 i and i get cancels so the factor will be 0.4 so for this it is 0.5 divided by 0.833 i am getting around 0.6 so one thing we need to remember that the for the respective joint so if i add the distribution factor of all the member of the of the particular joint then i need to get a, a value as equal to 1 so that is nothing but 0.4 plus 0.6 i should get the value as equal to 1 so the next is joint c coming on to the next joint that is joint c so for the joint c the initiating member from joint c is cb and cd so from c to b and c to d so cb and cd so now so when, whenever i will just consider for cb so b is the farther end for joint c b is the farther end for joint c it is a continuous support so as i said in the earlier while calculating bc whenever the farther end is of continuous support so the value of relative stiffness is equal to i by l itself so it is equal to i by l here is again 2 meters so i by 2 comes on to be 0.8 sorry 0.5 times of i so next is uh, joint cd i mean member cd so for member cd d is the farther end for um, for the joint c so if uh, d is the joint uh, farther end for joint c uh, d, i mean uh, d is the farther end for joint c you can just observe it is a fixed support and the uh, it has explained while uh, doing for joint uh, b of ba member so that is equal to i by l itself i by l so i by l here is 3 so i by 3 it is equal to again 0.33 times of 5 so for total relative stiffness it is summation of 0.5 and 0.33 uh, i it comes on to be 0.833 so distribution factor for cb for joint c is 0.5 by 0.833 i so comes on to be equal to 0.6 and this will be equal to 0.4 so if i just add the 6.6 and 0.4 it is 1 0.4 and 0.6 it should be 1 itself so this is how we are supposed to calculate the distribution factor for the given member the next step here is we are supposed to analyze so we are supposed to analyze for the moment distribution uh, a moment distribution and for the joint equilibrium uh, for solving the joint equilibrium condition so for that we are supposed to formulate the moment distribution table so the formulation of the moment distribution table step 3 step 3 formulation of formulation of 
moment distribution table formulation of moment distribution table or it is also called as md table so moment distribution table so as in this case the moment distribution table so i am just considering the overall tabular column like this so this is a b member next i just consider b a b c c b c d and d c d c now for joint b the two members are b a and b c so wherein it has the moments has to be distributed based on the distribution factors so from the last step we have got the distribution factor for ba as 0.4 and bc as 0.6 so here uh, for cb and cd it is a joint where in the distribution factor of cb i have got it as 0.6 from the distribution table and for cd i have got it as 0.4 now after doing this i need to i need to first uh, substitute the values of the uh, fixed end moments which uh, which i have got from the step 1 so fixed end moment i have got it from the step 1 uh, for the ab beam as minus 41.67 and for ba i have got it as plus 18.33 and for bc i have got it as plus 1.25 1.25 and then uh, for uh, cb i have got it as 51.25 so 51.25 i am getting so next is uh, minus 37.5 so minus 37.5 and plus 37.5 so these were the values i have got it by using the uh, uh, by using the fixed end moments calculation so after substituting these values first i'll concentrate on joint b here so first i am going to concentrate on joint b over here so you can just observe so for joint b there are two members so one is ba and one more is bc one is ba and one more is bc so i need to add this total um, moment so i need to add this total moment as i show here so here um, joint b i need to add the total moment so ba plus bc i am getting around 18.33 plus 1.25 so this is the value i have got by using the uh, i mean uh, if i add this i am getting around 19 point so 19.58 so 19.58 this is a positive value i am getting so in order to balance this 19.58 which is the positive value of the moment of the respective joint b so i need to counter i need to add the counter moment of minus 19.58 so if i just add that counter moment of minus 19.58 the overall value has to be equal to zero in that respective joint so that the joint equilibrium condition will be satisfied so therefore this minus 19.58 i should distribute this for the members ba and bc based on the respective uh, distribution factors so i repeat it so this 19.58 is the counter moment for the total moment acting at the joint b which is a summation of ba and bc so now this minus 19.58 should be added for the members ba and bc in such a way that it has to be distributed based on the distribution factor 0.4 and 0.6 so if if it is distributed then the joint equilibrium condition has to be satisfied so in that case firstly i'll take up the first joint that is uh, joint ba so jo i mean member ba so for member ba 
minus 19.58, we are supposed to do it as like this, minus 19.58, distribution factor of BA is equal to 0.4, distribution factor of BA is equal to 0.4, so it is equal to, if I just add, uh, multiply that, it is equal to minus 7.83, Minus 7.83 and uh, next one 11.75 that is uh, into 0.6 it is equal to minus 11.75. So uh, this is how we are supposed to distribute. So minus 7.83 and then minus 11.75. So next if I just take this coming on to the next joint that is joint C. So if I just take joint C, um, so for joint C, you can just observe there are two members. So one is one is CB and one more is CD. So one is CB and one more is CD. So the overall moment here is summation of CB and CD. So if I just add that total moment, so it is equal to, it is equal to, 51.25 minus 37.5. So 51.25 minus 37.5. So I am getting around the total value as plus 13.75. This is the total moment at joint C due to the individual member moments um, uh, CB and CD. So this 13.75 it is the positive moment. So in order to have the joint equilibrium condition, I am supposed to count, add the counter moment of minus 13.75 based on the individual members distribution factor so that the achievement of joint equilibrium uh, condition purpose will be served. So therefore, 13.75, so 13.75 into 13.75, the first joint, it is for, I mean, the first member, it is for CB. So 13.75 minus 13.75. So for this, the distribution factor is, uh, uh, that is uh, 0.6. So into 0.6, it is equal to minus 8.25, I will get. So it is minus 8.25. So next, the... Um, Next is CD, for that CD, so minus 13.75 into 0.4, minus 13.75 into 0.4, I will be getting around 5.5 uh, with an side. So minus 5.5. So this is how you are supposed to do it for the individual joint based on its distribution factor. So next one. I need to, after uh, doing distribution and uh, distributing the moment for the individual joints based on the uh, distribution factors. So based on the distribution factors. So I need to, I need to carry over this uh, moments for the neighboring members. So carry over. So for this, it is minus 7.83 is the value which is there. So this has to be carried over with the half value of this total value that is nothing but 7.83 divided by 2 that much amount of moment it has to be transferred to the span ab or member ab with the same sign so it will be equal to minus 3.92 so it is equal to minus 3.92 so now here so 11.75 so 11.75 uh, half of that is uh, minus 5.88. So 5 11.75, half of that is 5.88. So since it is a negative value, same value has to be uh, transferred for the CB. So from CB to BC. So from CB to BC, it is 8.25 with a negative sign. So 8.25 divided by 2, it is 4.13. Since this is of the negative sign, same sign will be carried. So next is uh, for CD, for CD, uh, I have 5.5. It has to be transferred or carried over to DC. 
so it is nothing but 5.5 divided by 2 so it is equal to 2.75 with a negative sign because the negative sign is there here the same sign has to be carried now after carrying over we need to do the next step as balancing the moments we need to do the next step for, as the balancing the moments so for balancing the moments i need to go for the respective joints only so i if i just observe here the total moment for joint b is 4.13 so here i don't have anything but here the total moment acting here is 4.13 with a negative sign so here the total moment is minus 4.13 and uh, it is acting so therefore in order to counteract this moment with a negative sign i need to add plus 4.13 the counter moment of positive 4.13 has to be added in order to balance the uh, uh, equilibrium condition for the joint based on its distribution factor so it is for uh, BA, it is 4.13 times of 0.4. So 4.13, that is plus 4.13 into 0.4. I'm getting around 1.65. So it is 1.65, the positive value. So next is uh, uh, 4.13 times of 0 0.6. So 4.13 times of 0 0.6, I'm getting around 2.48 so 2.48 so this 2.48 next is 5.5 5.88 uh, it is there so 5.88 it is there with a negative value so total moment acting at joint c is 5.88 with a negative sign so in order to counteract this 5.88 the positive value of counter moment has to be added so minus 5.88 has to be countered with plus 5.88 so that the overall value has to be equal to 0. But for this overall plus 5.88, it has to be distributed based on 0.6 and 0.4 distribution factor. So 5.88 into 0.6 and 5.88 into 0.4. So 5.88 into 0.6, I am getting around. 3.53 so 5.88 into 0.6 i am getting around 3.53 and for this i am getting around 2.35 2.35 so this is how we are supposed to balance this procedure has to be carried until the uh, overall balance will be at a very small uh, i mean magnitude so next is again I need to carry over so half of this value has to be carried over so 1.65 divided by 2 is 0 0.83 with the same sign positive sign so 2.48 half of this so 2.48 half of uh, 2.48 is 1.24 so 1.24 and then 3.53 half of that is 1.77 so 1.77 and then um, uh, 2.35 half of that is 1.18 so again this is a carry over so next is the balance state so balance state it is a positive value 1.77 is a positive value so for this power positive value I need to distribute the negative um, I mean I need to counteract the uh, add I mean I need to add the counter negative moment of 1.77 over here so it is minus 1.77 i need to counter uh, balance the moment so hence minus 1.77 into 0 0.4 if i do that i'm getting around 0 0.71 so minus 0 0.71 and here i'm getting around minus 1.77 into 0 0.6 i'm getting around uh, 0 1.06 so 1.06 and then this 1.24 it is there so in order to uh, counterbalance this 1.24 so i need to add minus 1.24 so minus 1.24 into 0 0.6 so minus 1.24 into 0 0.6 it is minus 0.74 and uh, minus 0 0.5
minus 0 0.5 so next is again i need to i need to uh, carry over i need to carry over so this is how you are supposed to do this so carry over half of this value carry over so minus 0 0.71 half of that is minus 0.36 so this is uh, 1.06 divided by 2 it is uh, 0 0.53 0 0.53 and 0 0.74 half of that is uh, equal to 0 0.37 with the same sign and 0 0.5 half of this is 0 0.25 with the negative sign the same sign has to be carried now after carrying over that we need to balance that so after carrying i need to balance that so now going on to the joint first for the balancing so joint b i have the overall uh, i mean overall uh, uh, moment acting is minus 0.37 so if i just add uh, i mean if i just take minus 0.37 i need to counter balance minus 0.37 by adding plus 0.37 moment so plus 0.37 into 0.4 so plus 0.37 into 0.4 it is 0 0.15 so again, plus 0.37 into 0.6 is 0 0.22. Again, going for the joint uh, uh, C, so minus 0.53 is there. So for minus 0.53, so I need to counterbalance this 0.53 uh, with the positive convention. So plus 0.53. So plus 0.53 has to be distributed as 0.53 into 0 0.6. So 0.53 into 0 0.6. It is, uh, I'm getting around uh, 0 0.32, 0 0.32. So plus 0.53 into 0 0.4, I will get it as 0 0.21. So this is how you are supposed to do the, this is how you are supposed to carry out. So until you are supposed to get the negligible or a very small value, you are supposed to carry this uh, process. So the overall process has to be carried. So in order to, uh, until we are supposed to get the um, small uh, magnitude of the moment. And one more thing we are supposed to remember that the, um, the overall or the total moment has to be considered only after the balance state. It has to be ended uh, uh, at the balance state, not at the carryover state. So lastly, I'm going to add all this in order to get the total moment so total moment so i need to add all this so for a b member so it is minus 41.67 minus 3.92 and my uh, plus plus 0 0.83 and minus minus 0 0.36 so minus 0 0.36 so i am going to get as minus 45.12 so I, if i add all this the total moment is equal to minus 45.12 so again for the uh, ba so first one is 18.33 minus 7.83 plus 1.65 minus uh, 0 0.71 plus 0 0.15 so if I just take that into consideration, I'm getting around 11.59 with a positive sign. So next, I'm supposed to get the same value with a negative sign at the BC. Let us, let us see here. 1.25 minus 11.75 minus uh, 4.13 plus 2.48 plus 1.77 minus 1.06 minus 0 0.37 and plus 0 0.22 so exactly i am getting the same value but with a negative sign so if i just add this both so minus 11.59 and plus 11.59 so the overall uh, value is equal to zero so therefore the joint equilibrium condition here in the joint b uh, joint b is satisfied so next is for uh, CB member. So it is uh, 51.25 minus 8.25 minus 5.88 plus 3.53 plus 1.24 minus 
zero point seven four minus point five three and plus zero point three two. So if I just add all the things, I'm getting forty point nine four with a positive sign. Similarly for CD, minus thirty seven point five minus thirty seven point five minus five point five plus two point three five minus zero point five and plus zero point two one. So again, the same value I am getting with the negative sign. The same value I am getting with the negative sign forty point nine four. So if we just check here, if I just add both, I am getting the value as zero. So what the overall uh, uh, process I have done, it is right. So it is a joint equilibrium condition. Purpose will be solved. So last will be for DC. So we'll check for DC thirty seven point five minus two point seven five plus one point one eight minus zero point two five. So it is thirty five point six eight with a positive sign thirty five point six eight. So these are the Total moments I am getting for the overall members. So after this, after doing this, so the last step, the last step is uh, uh, checking for the maximum bending moment. So I need to check for the maximum bending moment in order to draw the uh, bending moment diagram. So in order to draw the bending moment diagram, I need to check for the maximum bending moment. So, as in case of uh, member A B, so as in case of member A B, step four, check for maximum bending moment. Check for maximum bending moment. So, for span A B, it is uh, uh, it is loaded with a uniformly distributed load of span equal to three meters, magnitude of load equal to forty. So the, it will be equal to W L square by eight. So W here is forty. L is equal to three square divided by eight. So whenever when the beam uh, is loaded with the uniformly distributed load, the overall maximum bending moment is equal to W L square by eight. So the overall will be equal to forty into forty into span is equal to three meters. So three square divided by eight. So I'm getting around forty-five kilo newton meter. Forty into three square divided by eight. So forty into three square divided by eight. So I'm getting around forty-five kilo newton meter. So next is uh, next is that uh, uh, it is for uh, span. It is for span BC. So it is for span BC. So for span BC, it is uh, given with a center concentrated load. So whenever when it is given with a center concentrated load, the value here is W L by four. So the value here is W L by four. So W here is hundred. L is uh, uh, two. W into two hundred. A hundred into two by four. So hundred into two by four. So two hundred divided by four. So two hundred divided by four, it is equal to fifty. So two hundred divided by four equal to fifty kilonewton meter. For CD, again, it is same as that of span EAB that is uh, supported with uniformly distributed load of fifty and three uh, span is three. So it is fifty into W L square by eight. So fifty into uh, three square divided by eight. So we'll check the value for that. So fifty into So fifty into three square divided by eight. So fifty six point two five. So the value here is fifty six point two five. So this is how we are supposed to calculate the, uh, uh, I mean the maximum bending moment. So lastly, when we draw for the bending moment diagram. So when we draw for the bending moment diagram, A, B, C, and D. So here uh, the bending moment. For uh, uh, I mean total moment for AB is forty five point one two forty five point one two eleven point five five nine here. So here again is forty point so forty point nine four and then thirty five point six eight. 
for 35.68. So I am going to join this. Mention the values 40. Point, I'm sorry, 45.12. 45.12 and this is 11.59, 11.59 and this is 40.94 and 35.68, 35.68. So apart from this, so if I want to draw for the uh, maximum bending moment, so WL square by 8, 45 kilonewton meter. So since it is a uniformly distributed load, the variation here is parabolic. So draw as a curve. So mention from the base, it is 45. 45. So mention it as 45. So from the base, it is 45. So next, it is uh, 50 kilonewton meter for span BC. So it, since it is a concentrated load, so the variation is linear. So the variation is linear. The triangular variation. So from the base uh, till the top, it is. 50 till the top it is 50 mark it as 50 so lastly we have for uh, uh, cd it is uh, 50 kilonewton per meter at the span of 3 meters so 56.25 so 56.25 since it is the uh, i mean the uniformly distributed load the variation again is uh, uh, i mean parabolic so uh, it draw as a uh, curve uh, that is uh, 56.25 from the base, you are supposed to draw it as 56.25. So mark the span distances here. So this is 3 meters, so this is uh, 2 meters or else if you can mark this as uh, 1 and 1 meter. So 1 meter and 1 meter. So this is equal to uh, how much? 3 meters. So this is how we are supposed to analyze the uh, continuous beam uh, for the uh, sinking of the support condition by using moment distribution method. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe my video. Thank you.